Super Tuesday is in the books, and the big takeaway is that President Biden and former President Trump, as many expected, are essentially the last candidates standing. On the Republican side, former U.N. Ambassador and South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley suspended her campaign today, as did Democratic challenger Dean Phillips. So joining us once again to dive into these results is Democratic consultant Beverly Watts. Thanks for having and me. And also joining us via Zoom is Republican and former Michigan House Majority Leader Rocky Rochkowski. Thank you for being here with us as well. Good evening. Thank you. So to get started, you know, it's not official yet. Some delegates still need to be collected by each candidate, but it's looking like a rematch. It seems safe to say. I'd love to know from both of you, for your respective parties, what do you think are the main strengths and weaknesses for these candidates? Beverly, we'll start with you and President Biden. Yes. I think the strength is, of course, funding. I think the strength is a couple of things that he's been able to accomplish since he's been in office. A lot of great things. Working on the economy, getting some of the, the medical, you know, drugs, lowered the price. We can talk about tuition. You know, everybody loves that, to get rid of that debt. Uh, a lot of other things that he's been trying to do. Infrastructure, which is huge, huge ARPA funds. So I think President Biden has a lot of wins he could say. Not perfect, a lot of things he still wants to accomplish, but I think he can capitalize on some of the things he's been able to do, especially in three years. And Rocky. That was some good spin for Beverly, but uh, I have to say the biggest thing that President Trump has got going for him in this rematch, number one, is what Ronald Reagan said four years uh, or many, many moons ago in his campaign, and that is, are you better off now than you were four years ago? And I don't think anyone can say that they're better off financially or that they're better off in national security or that our borders secure or that those prices that Beverly was talking about are, are lower. They're actually much higher. And uh, so, number one, President Trump's got that behind him, saying, are you better off now than you were four years ago? And ask yourself that question, and then you'll decide who you should vote for. Secondly, is I still don't believe that Biden, that this will be a rematch. I still believe that the Democratic Party will have a, like a 1968 revolution like they did in Chicago in 1968. And I think that President Biden may not be their, their nominee when all is said and done and the dust clears. If I can, if I can just say one comment, if he asked that question of when we were under the former president, are we better off? I, I beg to differ. They couldn't find one thing to say we're better off under former Trump. You know, I do believe Biden has done and has some accomplishments, and I do believe that he can have some of the wins that he can have in that column. As of tomorrow, it's a big win, but he needs to come out strong. He needs to let the American people know that he's physically and mentally able, able to be the president for the next four years. I, I think Beverly's absolutely correct. There were some great accomplishments. A lot of things are up. Rent is up. Prices are up. Food prices are up. Gas prices are up. Utility prices are up. The amount of migrants moving across that southern border unwatched and unchecked are up. Our national security is the only we thing that's We could solve now. that if Congress, led by the Republicans, just go ahead and do the bipartisan bill. We could, we could solve that problem. There's by no the way, I'm that. wondering why that problem wasn't solved under the former president, because he really campaigned on building it, that wall. It actually, it actually was, <laughs> and we don't need it immigration reform. We need to live by the laws we have. My parents are immigrants. My wife was an immigrant as a young, young child. I got to tell you that I, I really hinder, I, I, I take a step back when I hear people saying we need immigration reform. No, what we need to do is live by the law. And, and uh, you know, when you look at President Trump's record, he built the wall. He secured our southern border. And no other president did that more than he did. The major problem he has is that he's not a, being a leader for everyone. And that's the rhetoric, and I think that's the problem Trump is going to have. Mega, make America great again. He's not talking about all of America, these United States. So as you get there and say things that he's accomplished, which we're still trying to find those things he's accomplished, he needs to make sure he's inclusive of everyone, even the minorities in this country. Well, one problem. You know, that's funny that you say that have. because I, me, I, I've got to say, one problem well, both of the candidates have is they're not particularly popular candidates. Absolutely. Both have large swaths That's of true. the population who are not fans of either candidate. Uh, let's start on the Republican side. Rocky, Nikki Haley's supporters, a significant group of them. Where do you think they go, if anywhere, in November? Or might they stay home? They have nowhere else to go but with President Trump. You heard today that Mitch McConnell, who was President Trump's uh, arch nemesis, even in his own party, who helped President Trump uh, basically fill the courts when he was the president, uh, basically now has endorsed President Trump as Mitch McConnell is leaving as the leader. But when you look at overall uh, how you attract individuals, 
you see people like Charlemagne de God, who says that it, more minorities are looking at Republican candidates and at President Trump more than ever. And, and Biden's actually the one that is starting to have the deficit of minorities and other individual groups and coalition groups not supporting him. That's why I still stand by the statement that I do not believe that President Biden will be the nominee for the Democratic Party. And Beverly, President Biden, uh, he's, his approval ratings have been stuck in the 30s for some time now. Uh, more than 100,000 Michigan voters voted uncommitted in the Democratic primary. Uh, where do you think those voters are going to go in November? I think in November this state will remain blue, but I've said it once, I'll say it again. It's going to be Wayne County and City Detroit that keeps this state blue and come through for, for Biden. When you look at what he's tried to do, you know, he's tried to get the George Floyd bill passed. He tried to get the John Lewis bill passed. He's going to have to hone in on all those things he tried to do, but was a unable to do it because of the Republican-led Congress. He's also going to just have to pitch out and oh, say, well, hey, Democrats I'm going to come. control Congress. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Republicans who really stopped in the they bill now, but it's the Senate before, that, that, he has, this house. that he has. But I think that what he's really going to have to do is just really show all the things that he's done and remind people why they selected and voted for him in 2020 and why they did not vote for the former president. And remember, all he's isolating some of the minorities, you know, the former president with rhetoric statements that he's made, especially the black voters. Uh, I don't know what Charlemagne is speaking of, but the individuals I'm speaking of, they're really going to come to the polls because they do not want a leader of this free country of someone that's only going to serve a certain portion of this country. Country. They want someone's going to serve all, not making gym shoes or not making remarks about in the dark, I can see you, not seeing my mugshot. You know, black voters can relate to that. You're really trying to get them to support you, but hopefully he keeps that rhetoric up because it's going to work in the favor of the Democrats. All right. Well, I, I disagree, but that's, <laughs> you see more and more you're minorities. Not a minority, you're not African American. We will have no <laughs> shortage more of more debates going forward. Supporting. Beverly Watts and, and Rocky Roszkowski, thank thanks so much for joining us. The general you. election really just started to heat up, and it's going to be a long uh, year. Yes. We'll have you both back. Thank you so much for <laughs> joining you. us today.